Hello everyone, it's Brienne here. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we recently looked at classical feng shui and the three money corners, but I wanted to do a bit of a part two in regards to now that we've got our money corners, we've plotted them on our on our layout, how do we activate those? Uh, so we're gonna take a look into different ways on how to activate those today. All right, so how do you activate your money corners? In classical feng shui, one of the main potent ways to activate an area is by using the elements. We use this to either activate or also weaken um, an, a certain energy in the home. So if we take a look at the layout that we used for the past video, you can see we have money corner in the southwest, the southeast, and the east. Now for this purpose, we're gonna use the east corner. We're gonna put an office in there. Um, it's got a great annual one star for 2024. Um, we're gonna make this our office for the year to strengthen and bring in money energy. So again, to recap, if you look at the little blue box with the east sector here, you'll see there are three numbers. There is a three, a nine, and a six. Now the six is the base number. We do not use that number to remedy or activate a home. Um, we're going to be using the sitting stars and the mountain stars. Now this one, we're just going to be looking at the right hand nine as this is the facing star, also known as the water star, and this is going to help activate your money energy. So if we take a look at the five elements and the cycles, as you can see, there's a producing cycle and a weakening cycle, as well as a controlling cycle. So we're gonna take a look at, for example, we've got fire produces earth, earth produces metal, metal produces water, water produces wood, and wood produces fire. And then that can go around as weakening as well, like fire um, weakens wood, wood weakens water, water weakens metal, metal weakens earth, and earth weakens fire. Um, so in these cases, we've got a nine in the upper right hand corner. So that's the number we're going to be working with for the east. Now the number nine, if we look at the flying stars, this is related to the element of fire. So we're going to want to um, activate that nine in the east in, with the fire element here. So what do we need to activate that? Well, you can use more fire itself. You can use the element or you could use pops of red, pops of orange and yellow. Um, I will say using colors, even though that is also another way that we work with activating an area of the home, it's not the most potent or powerful. It's best to use the elements um, for the best results. So if we're working with fire, you can even add a fireplace or candles, um, certain objects that represent fire. Now, um, if you're wanting to also strengthen that, what produces or what strengthens fire. You've got wood, wood feeds the fire. So if you want to also add certain furniture or things that are going to support the fire element, you can add wood furniture um, or certain wood objects to help strengthen the energies in this money corner. By adding an earth element, for example, that is going to weaken the fire. It's going to make that energy not as potent. Now, something to make note of, as I mentioned, the number one star is located in the East sector for 2024. If we look at the number one star, which element is that? Water. And if we take a look at water, what does water do to fire? It controls it. Water is going to put out the fire. So it's also important to see how every, you know, all the energies work together and how they feed off each other. So you have a permanent nine in there. So it's a permanent nine fire energy, but depending on the monthly energies and the annual energies, that's going to also either weaken or make that um, that element stronger. So 
the one it's important to note for 2024, even though that's a money corner, it might be not as potent because you have the one water star, which is kind of putting that energy out. So again, to strengthen that, you can put some more, a few more fire thing, fire objects uh, or fire related objects, as well as wood furniture, for example. All right, so another really powerful way to usher in the wealth energy is a water fountain. Now, this one's a bit of a touchy topic because water fountains can only be placed in certain areas of the home. And for example, um, generally speaking, you can place a water fountain usually in the east, the north, and the southeast sectors of the home but that does not apply to everyone. <laughs> you really want to be careful with the water fountains um, and be aware of what you're activating because water is one of the most powerful ways to really usher in that chi. So it can bring a lot of good financial abundance, but it could also trigger a lot of financial loss and health issues and relationship issues as well. Um, and that's that's a big one, especially if you have a large pool or or something of that matter. It can really trigger a lot of stuff. So to kind of give you guys a bit of an example, this is kind of an image of a water fountain that would work great in feng shui. It's it's perfect if you could have something that's three tiers. Um, and ideally, you want it to have two or three liters of water. Now, to kind of go over that again, for example, like the north could support a water feature, but in my case, I've got a period eight northeast two facing home. So if you take a look at the facing star number seven in the north palace, would I want to activate my number seven star? Definitely not, because if we look at the number seven star, that's pertaining to violence, robbery, that's going to most likely cause a lot of money lost if I were to put a water fountain in my north. However, my ETH does support a water feature as well. And I have a number nine facing star. So, and that's that's something that I could put in my east, but not to my north. So I wish I could sit here and tell you guys, yes, you guys can all put one in this sector, but you really have to look at your permanent placements and you have to observe the annual and monthly is very important as well. Because even if I do choose to put a water fountain in my east sector, I would want to turn that off when the number three star hits, the number five or the number seven as well, because again, that's going to stir up um, financial issues and it could also shake up some health issues and relationship mishaps as well. So again, be very cautious when you guys are putting up water features and it's very important and I would say worthwhile to consult a professional uh, classical feng shui consultant if you're looking to do this. Now, another way of activating an area as well is relating to the colors. Now, it's important to keep in mind, again, the colors is not as strong as using the actual element. Um, but to quickly go over, we have the different colors, the objects, and their elements here to show you what can activate based on the stars residing in that sector. For example, we've got fire um, in terms of elements. We've got candles, fireplaces, light fixtures pictures, electronics, all that is a fire energy and the colors relating to that are reds, yellows, oranges, reddish purples, even some pinks. Um, now if we move on to wood, we've got there the wood elements are relating to plants, trees, any wood furnitures you may have and the color relating to wood would be all shades of green. Moving on to the earth element. The earth element is relating to objects such as ceramics, bricks, uh, terracotta pots, any crystals. So any of those crystal collectors out there, uh, boulders, stones, and the colors related to earth are all shades of brown. 
Now, if we move on to the metal element, we've got different objects such as metal statues, metal furniture, you know, even filing cabinets and the pots and pans, even in the kitchen, all of that contributes to the metal objects. And the colors relating to this are metallic colors, um, as well as whites, grays, silvers, golds. Um, and now moving on to the water element. Again, this can relate to the water fountains, but something I wanna make note here is um, if you need to remedy an area with the water, you can do that and make sure you're not doing that with moving water. You want stagnant water, so like a bowl or a pail of water. Now, sometimes it doesn't look super appealing to have a big black, you say, pan or garbage bin full of water. Um, so you can try to look at if you want to get some like large vases. Now just make sure they don't have like they have more of an opening. It's not a very thin neck at the top there. But pails, uh, stagnant water can help remedy certain areas as well. And colors related to that are blacks, blues, and purples. Now again, as I noted, sometimes the Colors are not necessarily um, the strongest way to activate, but they are definitely a factor that we use in classical feng shui. Um, and it's just, it's important to not go overboard as well. So for example, like as we discussed, the office has a fire energy. I wouldn't recommend painting all the walls in fire. It's better to go more of a neutral color, or sorry, but painting all the walls in red, <laughs> not fire, <laughs> sorry. But it's better to go kind of more neutral and then adding pops of the color. So if you want to add little, you know, red pillows, for example, or a red throw rug, those are all things that can also be altered and moved much easier. And you don't wanna be spending tons of money repainting every year. <laughs> so um, it's better to go more neutral colors and then adding certain pops of colors as you go along pertaining to each element. All right, so last but not least, another way to activate an area of the home is very simple. You just increase the time you spend in that area because keeping that area busy with continuous sound and movement will activate that area. It's a very yang energy. So for example, things such as having the TV on, having music going in the background, having your lights on, that's a, that's a bright, busy yang energy. And that's going to increase increase and activate that star in that sector of the home. So again, um, keep a lookout for your monthly stars as well, or if it's a bad annual star, it's best to decrease the usage of your energy in that sector. Um, again, now, if, if you want to work at activating, you can also look at moving decor, such as you could use pendulum clocks or certain certain objects that continuously move as well. Now, um, again, so if you have certain areas that are a little bit more challenging, it's best just to limit your limit your use in in that certain sector as much as possible. So again, for an example, we want to increase the energy of the wealth and wealth that flying star number in the east sector of the home where the office is. You can keep a little light on there 24 hours a day um, or maybe keep some soft music going and just make it more of a busier yang area as well as doing your work, being uh, having electronics as well. So having your computer set up there, um, all that will contribute to that busy continuous movement. All right, everyone. So there you have it. There's some information on how you would activate your home. You can do that using certain elements, colors, and even just occupying that space can help activate those areas of your home. Again, just be cautious and be aware of what energetics are in your home and environment to make sure you're not activating areas that you want to maybe be remedying. But again, it's all about working with the elements and that physical presence in your home. So again, thank you again for joining me on this journey, sending you guys lots of love and light. And until next time, bye for now.